This is the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and in this video I'm going to personally review the phone as well as try to synthesize the general consensus among all the major tech reviewers out there. I'll also be comparing it to my hilariously un-ultra Google Pixel 6a and deciding whether to spend my entire tax return on replacing it with this bad boy. I'll tell you some of the biggest reasons people will want to buy this phone as well as some of the biggest reasons they won't want to buy this phone. Without further ado, let's get into the review. When I first took this phone out of the box, I was shocked at how much I actually liked the design when holding it in person. When the S22 came out last year, I was very disappointed with how it looked. Its perfectly rounded edges just completely threw me off. To my surprise, this phone dialed that down considerably, making the corners much more square, to the point where I actually really like the rounded edge on this device. It gives it a really nice, distinguished look that you can't really get anywhere else. I chose the matte black model, but you can also get it in green, lavender, and cream. And if you get it from Samsung's website, you can also choose some exclusive colors like lime, graphite, sky blue, and red. The frame is aluminum and the whole thing feels extremely well built. I weirdly love the bottom of the phone. They've jammed so much stuff in there with the S Pen slot, the speaker vent, and the charging port that it looks like a panel you'd see on a droid in Star Wars or something. The Ultra weighs in at 8.2 ounces, heavier than last year's model which was 8.08 .08 ounces, so not as much as the iPhone 14 Pro Max which is 8.47 ounces, but much more than the Pixel 7 Pro which is 7.48 ounces. I will say this about hefty phones, they are much more prone to being drop since they're bigger and heavier. And this isn't good since the consequences of dropping them would be much more severe from a financial and physics standpoint. It has an IP68 rating meaning it is well protected from dust and water, and will be the first phone to use Gorilla Glass Victus 2. One positive thing about the build quality is that it's made from a lot of recycled parts. For instance, the side and volume keys are made from recycled water bottles. Ah, the S Pen. This little guy is like so unnecessary, and yet I love it. I don't find myself using this thing very much, and yet, it brings a certain magic to the S23 Ultra. It's something I've never had in a phone, and that instantly makes the device feel special and different from any other phone I've had. It kind of puts the device into a whole category of its own. This is something sorely needed in today's cell phone market where, apart from foldables, it's been the same rectangular slab for 15 years now. The S Pen does offer plenty of benefits though. For instance, you can use it to take group pictures, as it allows you to snap photos wirelessly. It's also great for doodling, and has a whole bunch of other Bluetooth enabled features, like air actions, smart select, screen write, and much more. I found air actions to be really nice for when your phone is playing some media and you want to be able to play and pause from a distance. The battery life on this device is really good. The Galaxy is packing a 5000mAh battery, the same size as last year. Except this year, the more powerful chip means the battery life has improved significantly. From the many reviews I've read, not a single one goes without mentioning how good the battery is. In the Guardian's test, the phone lasted 52 hours between charges, making it the longest battery life they've tested alongside the iPhone 14 Plus. I can tell you that right now as I make this review, it's 3pm, the phone had a full charge around 8.30am, and now it's only down to 73 it could easily go for two full days with light usage. As you would expect with a Samsung device, the display is excellent. The South Korean company makes 57% of all smartphone displays, including the iPhone 14 line, so it's safe to say they know what they're doing. The screen gets to a whopping 1750 nits of brightness and sails along at a buttery smooth 120 hertz. The wide viewing angles make sharing photos with your friends easier, and I have to say, coming from the Pixel 6a, the smoothness I feel from this phone, thanks to the high refresh rate, is very noticeable and keeps me coming back to it. This smoothness and the quick processor make everyday use feel so good. Let me tell you one of the biggest reasons people are going to choose this phone. The 10x optical telephoto lens. You cannot beat that level of zoom anywhere else on the market. And for those of you who aren't familiar with optical versus digital zoom, digital zoom refers to the process of enlarging an image by cropping and enlarging the pixels within that image, which often results in a loss of quality. Optical zoom, on the other hand, uses the camera's physical lens to zoom in on the subject, maintaining image quality as the subject is brought closer optically. Just look at these pictures Mark at Tom's Guide got of the Empire State. State building. That's amazing. And look at these photos this Twitter user posted from an airplane. No other major phone can do this and that makes this an incredibly versatile camera. Let's go over what each of these lenses do. You have the ultra wide camera which is 12 megapixels, your wide camera which is a crazy 200 megapixels, more on that later, your telephoto 10x which is 10 megapixels, and this is a laser for autofocus and this is your flash. Finally this is a 3x telephoto for bridging the gap between the wide and the 10x. The 200 megapixel camera is cool but I wouldn't recommend it for everyday use. It works really well if you have excellent lighting, 
otherwise you'll get a very grainy image. But it's fun, check out these shots of the grocery store I got. For an average user, these cameras are amazing. And with that 10x telephoto, this camera is more versatile than any other phone on the market. Some of the big name reviewers have cited some problems with it, like photo quality being inconsistent, video image stabilization not being good as the iPhone, etc. But honestly, these are nitty gritty complaints and I can promise you that if you're an average user or anyone less than a total photo snob, you will be completely satisfied. Oh, and it can do amazing moon photography. The software experience. So I can speak to this because I've been bouncing back and forth between the Google Pixel line and Samsung phones like a ping pong ball for years. Samsung software is notoriously obnoxious. For instance, they are always insisting people use their Bixby app, which is an assistant like Siri or Google. But since they're basically an HDTV company, they don't really have the amazing capabilities or integration that Google has. One thing that really bugged me is that I can't map the side button to Google Assistant. They're really trying to make Bixby happen. All that being said, they have fixed some things this time. Time around. For instance, it used to be that you could only set one timer on Samsung phones, and now you can do multiple timers, so that's super nice. Also, there are some things I like about the Samsung UI, like when you're organizing your apps, you can take entire pages of apps and move them around, instead of having to do them one by one like on a Google phone. By far the worst thing about this phone is its price. It's an incredible phone, but you pay for all that ultra power. In the US, it costs the same as last year, a whopping $1,200 for the base model. And in Europe, you need to pay 100 euros more for this year's model. That being said, there are always deals on these phones out there, and they tend to go down in price rather quickly. If you can wait till Black Friday, you are almost certain to get one of these phones for many hundreds of dollars off. So what's the verdict? Am I going to replace the Pixel 6a with this beast? Well, there's a lot to consider. It's a beautifully constructed phone. The S Pen is is super nifty and makes this phone feel special and interesting. The ultra zoom camera makes this a super useful shooter and better than any other camera system you can get. But no, I still love my Pixel 6a too much. Thanks so much for watching guys, please like and subscribe if you like this video. I'm still finding my exact niche on YouTube, but I can promise you quite a bit of technology and meme videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching, bye.